I was creating this video for my new course on Astra and Spectre that's coming out, and I realized I needed to add a lesson on the new feature about building these CSS grids or Bento grids that Spectre now supports. And I figured, you know what? I could post this on my YouTube channel. I think that everyone would kind of like to see a tutorial, maybe learn how CSS grids work. And so I thought, okay, I'll share this on YouTube as well as put it into the course. So this is going to be included in my course as well. So what you're looking at is something that I built here. It took me about five, maybe 10 minutes to put together. And this is what we're going to build. We're gonna put this together inside of Spectra. Before we get started, I wanted to jump back into the back end. I put together this little document here. You can see this is literally the exact same page we were just looking at. And I wanted to explain how CSS grids work and some of the understanding that you'll need in order to make this layout, which is honestly not that complex. You can do a lot more fancy things with bento grids, but how to make this uh, and understand how it's made so that you can essentially make anything that you see. So the foundation of the quote unquote CSS bento grid here is just a normal grid like this. There are columns, right? Columns stand up. I always like to think of like the Roman columns. So in this example here, we have one, two, three, four, five columns, and we have rows. I like to think of rows in like a theater of seats, right? So we have row one, two, and three. Now there's also positions, at least what I call positions. And positions are different from columns and rows, like the number of vertical and horizontal lines. So for example, position one is right here on the very edge of the grid. This is our position one for columns. This next line is position two for columns. This next line is position three, four, five, and six. So if we have five columns, we have six positions. We have column one, which goes from position one to two, column two that goes from position two to three, and so on. And these positions have a start and an end. So when we say that this column goes from position one to position two, it starts at one and ends at two. So now let's take a look at our example again, and let's kind of look at how many rows and columns there are. It's a little bit difficult because I've combined components of this grid together by adjusting where they start and end. In other words, where the position begins and the position ends. So this isn't very hard. I've already spoiled it for you. We know that the number of columns and rows is identical to our initial explanation. You can kind of visualize it, right? We have columns one, two, three, four, and five. Just like we have starting position one, position two, three, four, five, and six. And the same is true for our rows. So now I've built kind of like the middle step here for you to take a look at. Here is what this design looks like with our grid above it adjusted to this layout. If I select this container here inside of the grid and under general, I go down to grid item settings, you'll see that the column start, right? Remember that's position one over here is at position one, I spoiled it, it's at position one, and the end is at position four. Let's look at our grid again. We have one, two, three, and four, and these perfectly line up to help us here. So this has a starting position of one and an ending position of four. The next container has a starting position of four, right? Because it starts at one, two, three, four, and it ends at five. So it's pretty easy to understand, right? I always think when you visualize it like a true grid, it's not so hard. Okay, that's enough for the explanation. Let's take a look at actually building this now, and I think it'll click even more if it still hasn't clicked for you. So I've put together a little section down here called Let's Build It, but I think this is cheating already. So I'm going to remove all of our additional containers inside of our Let's Build It container. In fact, I'm just going to completely delete it all together, and we're going to start from scratch. So let's go ahead and add a container right here at the bottom. And our container is just going to be a single container. Now we need to go under General, and down at the bottom, go to Layout, and change it from Flex over to Grid. Now we need to set up how many columns and rows there are. Well, we already did that work, right? We counted five earlier, so I'm going to add five. One, two, three, four, and five. Right, we had five. One, two, three, four, five. And how many rows? One, two, three. So let's go down here, and let's add two, three. All right, so there it is. It's gotten started. Now let's start adding in our containers inside. So I'm just going to click this plus sign here and drop in a container. 
So we're going to select this container and under general, we have a new section called grid item settings. This is only visible for items inside of our grid. Now, based on how I've explained the grids, we aren't working with the simple settings. We're working with the advanced settings, but I like that because I think that gives us more control. So for our column here, remember, where do we start? We said position one and where do we end position four? And there it is. You can see it's stretched to take over positions one through four in row one. Let's add our next container. Container two here is going to be, well, it's technically exactly where we want it, but there's no harm going in here and setting this from under advanced position four to five. We've just kind of hard coded it. Now let's add our next container, which is a little bit different because our next container is from position five to six on the column. However, in rows, it's in positions one at the start, all the way down to three at the end, right? Not four, not at the end of our grid, but three. So let's go ahead and set that up now under grid item settings. Let's go to advanced. We can set this hard code at five to six. And now our row start here will be one to three. And you can see we have taken up the first two rows with our last column, just like this. Okay, it's starting to take shape. Let's drop another container in. This container, that one's pretty easy. We've already done that before. We know it's in position one to four. So we'll come over here. We'll go to grid layout settings, go to advanced and we'll go from one to four. Almost feels like cheating. And well, the next one is two. Let's add another container in. We're going to set up this one under advanced, just like we did the other ones from positions four to five. All right, there we go. We've got both of our first two rows completed and everything looks right. We've got two more containers to add now. Let's go ahead and add our last container here. And this last container, it's actually going to be just like it is now, but we're going to go to advanced and set this from one to two and then add our final container. And because what's after two, three, we're going to go to grid item settings, advanced, and we're going to go from two until six. There we go. Our grid is now complete, but let's go ahead and build the inside because that's part of the fun as well. So in this particular type of design, I like to start with these containers here that are solid because we can reuse them pretty easily. So let's go ahead and add by clicking into our container here. Let's add a container, right? A container within a container. And this container, I'm going to give a background style of a color and I'm going to set it to my brand color here. And I'm going to give it a border radius of 30 pixels. And I'm going to give it a box shadow. I think I just chose that default box shadow there. And I'm going to set a minimum height of 150. Now you can see just adjusting that single component there expanded out the rest of our grid. Why? Well, because everything else took up preset positions. So pretty cool. They all just adjusted because they had to adjust to their positions. Now I know that I use this at least how many more times? We have it one, two, I use this three times. So I'm just going to duplicate it. One more time, I'm going to drop it down into our bottom left container, and then I'll duplicate it again. Click on the three dots, duplicate, and I'm going to drag it down into the container below it. And now, there we go, we've got our three containers. The bottom two have text, but this top one just has an image. So let me go ahead and add an image into this, and I am going to add it in as a background style to this container. So I'll go to style, and instead of color for this one, I'll just set this one as an image. And let's click change image. And I don't remember which image we used. So let's just go ahead and choose the donuts. <laughs> totally wrong item, but there we go. That'll help us tell the two apart. How about that? And we'll get to the text towards the end. Let's actually just do our other two containers. So I'm going to duplicate this container here and drag it into this box and watch what's really cool about this. The container automatically expands. I love that. It feels like cheating sometimes. Uh, we're gonna duplicate it again and we're going to drag it into our other column over here. And this one, however, this one did not. This one did not extend to fill the container within it, but we can kind of cheat. We know that 150 and 150 is 300, at least for now, but we already know we're going to add some gutter space. So why don't we actually do that right now? It sounds like a great chance to do it. So let's select our container here and let's go to style. This is our big parent container, right? The, the grid container itself. We're going to style, we're going to spacing, and we're going to add row and column gap of 20. So there is our row gap of 20 and our column gap of 20. And that has achieved the effect of making them look separate. So now coming back to our friend here, we can set a minimum height here of pretty easily 320, right? So we'll come in here and say 320. And now this container 
is the same height as these two containers. Okay, let's select a different style for the background here. We're going to select an image. We're going to change our image. Uh, I've already forgotten which ones I've used. We'll select that one. All right, I was wrong again. Uh, and then let's go for this image here. Uh, it looks like a, a bowl of some kind of food there. So we'll choose the image background for this one. And I think that one was it. All right, I got that one right this time. But actually, I've used the same image twice. Let's replace that one just for fun. Let's come back in here, click the image, click change image. Uh, how about this burger? Yeah, that looks good. But we want to adjust it so that more of the burger is visible. We'll do something like that. And to do that, I just drag that little circle dot inside the positioning to make it line up. All right, we're almost done. See how easy this is? I told you it wasn't that hard. So let's just do the text now for the headline here. We're going to click into our container. We're going to add a heading. And my content here says, I'm just gonna copy it. We'll do the trick there with the highlighted text in a second. So you can see I've copied and pasted in, but I've brought over some, uh, some styling. So you know what? I'm just going to paste without styling because I wanna show you how this works. So we're going to take the word delicious and we're going to click this little paintbrush that says highlight text. Now that's not the correct highlight. We want it to look like this. So with our heading still selected, we're going to go uh, to style and we're going to click on highlight. This brings up our highlight settings. Here's where we're going to change the highlighted color background to transparent because we don't want anything in the background of that text and the color of the fonts, not white. It's going to be our brand blue. So now that's how we've achieved it. And instead of this, let's build it. I'm just going to get this out of the way. I'm going to go to spacing and just add in some bottom margin. There we go. Uh, so let's go ahead and you know what? Let's save time. Let's just duplicate this heading that we've made here and let's move it to our bottom section. But we're not done yet. We still have to make some changes to this top one, but we've got text in both places now. Uh, okay, so here's our heading in the top. Let's select the container that it's in and we're going to set up under general grid item settings, we want to align this one to the top. So items in this container are aligned to top. That gets them to line up nicely with the top of the rest of our grid over here. And now for this text on the bottom, we need to do two things. We need to change the text first and foremost. So let's just go ahead and copy this and paste in and it kept the formatting for our highlight, but we need to align it differently. So let's go to general, align it to the right. Let's select the container that it's in and Let's make sure we come down here. We're already in the right section. Let's go ahead and align it to the end. And so now our text has aligned to the bottom. I'm going to add in another heading here into our small little box and the color of my headings is just naturally the same color as this background. So I'm going to say made in, and I actually have two different headings here. So I'm going to add a second one first after I stylize the color of this text to be white and I'm going to center it under general center and we need to change the size. So I'm going to select the heading and I'm going to go to style under heading typography. I'm going to make it 25. Terrific. Now we'll just simply duplicate it and we're going to add our next section in SoCal and heart emoji. There we go. Actually, I didn't need the in it already existed. So now I'm just going to select the container that they're in under general layout. And under justify content, I'm going to choose space evenly and that achieves that kind of like spaced look. I don't know, just went for it. Uh, okay, we have one more section to go and that's for our browse our special section. So I'm just going to take one of these headers we've already made, I'm going to duplicate it and cheat again, but we made it from scratch, so it's not really cheating. And then this one says, what did I say here? I said, browse our specials, browse our specials. And then I use that little symbol. I am gonna cheat, I don't remember what the the code is for that item. So I'm just gonna paste that in. And I think I dropped this down a line and this down a line and left aligned it. And then we want it to go a little bit more in. So I think I added under style spacing, added some padding on the left or let's do margin left. Let's do 40, that's too much. Let's do 20, something like that. Hey, that looks right, cool. All right, what do you think? Let's close this. Let's save our draft here. Come back over to my example and refresh. What do you think? How did we do? I think it looks, I think it looks pretty good. That is how you use the CSS grid and customize some items in it to achieve a, I think a very humble and basic looking example. Something that's just not your typical 
things lined up in a perfect grid. But that's it. There you have it. That's the CSS grid system in Spectra.